Hi there, it's Scott Gardner here in the Ann H. Fisher New River Room at the Radford Public Library. This room is where we house our special collections along with our local history and genealogy items. This room is a literal treasure trove of items for the public to explore. And in these videos, I'm gonna talk about what those items are, both what's in the library and what's online. In this first video, we're gonna take a look at what's actually in the Ann H. Fisher New River Room. Well, let's get started with what I think are some of the truly indispensable assets in the New River Room. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but it's a good start. Among the most frequently asked questions about what we have is about Radford yearbooks. These are a great resource for the obvious of finding out about which students, teachers, clubs, etc. were in place at a given time. They also help with documenting what celebrations and sporting events the schools had throughout the years. And I'll let you in on one of my favorite aspects about yearbooks which I think gets ignored a lot, and this is the section of sponsors and advertisements. This section at the back of a yearbook is an amazing catalog of what industries, businesses, and shops were in the locality at any given point. In the New River Room, we have three main collections of yearbooks. We have the Radford High School Oak Leaf, which we have from 1922 through the present. There are some gaps missing, but we should be able to get you access to information from almost all the years in one form or another, including online, which we'll explore in the next video. We also have the link, which is Dalton Intermediate School's yearbook. We have these yearbooks from the first one produced in 1980 all the way to the present. The other important yearbook collection we have is the Beehive, which is the yearbook from Radford University. Our collection spans from 1926 to 2003 with unfortunately many gaps, but we do have a good concentration of beehives from the 1970s and 1980s. Radford University's McConnell Library has a complete collection, and yes, the public can go to the university library. One of the other very common questions we get is about who lived at a certain address or what business was at a certain location. We have a great collection to help answer these questions, and that is through our phone book and city directory collections. One of the key points about these resources is they show who or what actually was at an address. And this ties into the issue that the great majority of businesses are in rented spaces. If you were trying to find this information out through, let's say, courthouse records, you would not get too far because those records only show the owners of the properties, not who was occupying them. Our area phone book collection covers Radford as well as Montgomery and Pulaski counties. The years range from 1939 to 2015. As far as directories, we have two collections. We have the Radford City directories and the directories for the town of Pulaski. For the Radford City directories, we have from 1942 to the present represented. There are some gaps, mainly in the 1970s, but this shouldn't hamper research too much as the phone books can help fill in the missing pieces. Let's now take a look at questions that deal with our genealogy collection. Before jumping into genealogy, let's address the question of location. For anyone getting started with genealogy, I always give the caveat, your family's history may be located in what is now one county, but that doesn't mean it was that county when they lived there. Many of our Virginia counties started out as enormous territories that over time were sectioned off to make multiple smaller counties and localities. This can cause a problem for researchers because you might be scouring records for the wrong county for the wrong time period. How can you navigate this? There are two great resources. First, the Atlas of County Boundary Changes in Virginia, which gives a lot of background information on county development and also a visual representation of these changes. The other is the chart on the formation of Virginia counties, which in a nutshell gives you a concise flow of county formation. Both of these will assure that you're looking in the right spot for the right time period. Now to the actual genealogy research, once you know the right locality. It would be next to impossible and even multiple videos to give a complete glimpse of this collection. I just want to point out that it exists and covers a huge area from not just Virginia, but also neighboring states. This section is defined by the Dewey Decimal number of 929. 
Like I said, there are so many resources in this section, but I do want to point out a couple key areas of focus. First, we have immigration books and passenger lists, which have information about the key waves of immigration into this region from Germany, Ireland, and many other countries. Connected with these are ship passenger lists that show who is arriving at ports and from where at different times. A word of warning that these are by no means exhaustive and tend to highlight the bigger port cities. Second, we have indices that show what records are available across the country. Over time, people have scoured records in courthouses, churches, and cemeteries and published them to show what records exist. These indices do not give the full information of any one document, but they indicate whether or not a record exists and where to find it. To make this clear, I'll use the examples of marriages in the New River Valley, Virginia, which lists out the marriages of all individuals on record in those localities. They don't give every single detail in the listing, but if you want to find out more details, this book would let you know if that is even possible, meaning is the license in existence. The other is the Index to Virginia Estates, 1800 to 1865. This covers the transfer of lands and property through sales, inheritance, and more. The New River Room also carries information for minority groups, including Native American and African American genealogies. Now let's take a look at local history, and let's just be honest that genealogy and local history are not mutually exclusive. My first example of a great asset in our local history collection is something that I often recommend to people working on their genealogy and local history. This is the Early Adventurers on the Western Water series by Mary Kegley and F.B. Kegley. In these books, the Kegleys trace the individuals and families who developed our region during the 18th and early 19th centuries. These books include biographical, historical, geographic, and even visual information. If your family or area of interest was in this region in the 18th century, then you should probably give this series a look. The final thing I want to highlight from our local history collection are the books of Linda Killen. Killen was a history professor at Radford University who became interested in charting the histories of the small localities of the region. This area of interest took her into a deeper view of the African American history of the community. This history is often difficult to find, but with Linda Killen's books, you can find a good starting point and go from there. Of particular interest to Radford are her works on the African American residents of Radford and New River. Before we conclude, I want to point out a great tool we have in the New River Room, which is our microfilm reader. Forget about the clunky machines of the past. This easy to use machine allows for maximum visibility and ease of saving or printing materials found within. We have a selection of reels covering vital statistics for the area and the Radford News Journal newspaper. You can also bring in reels, or we can acquire reels from other libraries through our interlibrary loan option. In the next video, we'll go more in depth on the topic of newspapers and how to find them. Thanks for joining me in the New River Room. In the next video, we'll take a look at the newspaper resources we have, as well as what we have online with our genealogical and local history databases. Mm -hmm.